Part two of the Battle of Antietam. Here we go. Stonewall Brigade's about to cease to exist. Of course, as I said in part one, my main concern right now is just holding on over here because I'm really thin in this area. And of course, now we also have Burnside Bridge to deal with, but I'm honestly not in any big hurry to press across there. I'm really concerned about all of this. I'm going to start pressing forward. I really need to shift some more units over this way. Alright. Of course, now the battlefield's opened up more. I've got the potential for units to get into my rear. So I've got to come down this way as well with a few brigades just to cover cover my extreme right flank. Alright, keys. We gotta back up, bud. Alright, shift, shift, shift. Here comes Hampton. Back up, back up. Oh man, back up. No, don't turn, just back up. There we go. So I bring these, oh, I got four brigades there. Bring them right in here on the left. I can bring them down to capture the town when the time comes. I'm going to keep Ferguson back here. Just keep one brigade on that objective. Pretty stable now. Getting some stronger brigades in over here on this side. Numbers wise, I've got them better than two to one. So I really just need to be patient and keep pressing forward. Eventually, I'm pretty much going to destroy this army. About to take the sunken road. As I mentioned in part one, I've got some videos of my visit to Antietam to the battlefield a few months ago, including the sunken road. And you can check out the links below in the description for those.
We don't actually need the stone bridge in order to win the battle. So, I really don't think I'm even going to bother crossing there. Now he's trying to load up over on this side. Just need to kind of close, tighten the noose here. Go ahead and take the town. Historically, at this point, the uh, Union hadn't yet secured the sunken road. I think that happened maybe around noon, 1 o'clock. About the same time that they were able to cross downstream over here and come up behind on Burnside Bridge and they finally were able to make it across. Alright, he's down to just 22,000 men. John Bounds Barkers are now up to a two-star unit. We're going to eventually get them to an elite three-star status. Pretty happy with how I'm performing, considering I've got a lot of very green units that are fighting for the first time and fighting with pretty inferior weapons. Two forty to go, and I actually hold all the objectives I need to win the battle at this point. I'm going to start condensing some of my smaller units. Stark surrendered. All right. Very nice. Get him out of there before they unsurrender him. Just got to keep pressing ahead. He's actually going to try to counterattack here. Is that what this is? All right, so I'm thinking maybe now's the time to cross over here just so I can come up underneath him. I don't know what all he's got there. I've got a lot of artillery sitting here. I think maybe I'll just bring them up here on this hill. leave some skirmishers to cover them.
He's pulling everybody down. What he's got left anyway, 18,000 men. It took a little bit to drive that brigade out, but we did drive them out. I'm going to go ahead and speed things up here. Some of these guys are going to get away, and I'm going to go ahead and let them get away. I'm not going to press this too much. Oh, in fact, there's the end of it because I took all the objectives. All right, so 64,700, 45,000. You can see here the casualties, 12,000 on my side, 22,000 on his side. I think if I had been allowed to let that continue, I could have jacked that up to maybe 30,000 by the time it was all said and done. But also almost 2,000 artillerymen. I only lost three guns, and I'm sure I got all those back and then some. So let's take a look. We captured seven Napoleons, nine six-pounders, 1,000 Springfield 1842s. Uh, some various other things. Nothing really great again, but I should be set up well moving forward. We're going to be getting into the fall with the uh, Battle of Fredericksburg. Nice haul for winning that one. Of course, we get a three-star Iron Brigade. Got $600,000 and 48,000 men available to me now. Uh, my current army is made up of about, let's see, 24, eh, almost 60,000 men. Got another 48,000 there, so I could field a 110,000 man army if I need to, which is right about where he is. Hopefully he doesn't have that many at Fredericksburg. But we've got Perryville and Iuka coming up next. Let's take a look at Iuka for a minute. That'll be the next one I fight. So 10 brigades, taking a pretty small force into that one. But again, I'll have a significant advantage. He's only got 7,300 men for that one. So let's take a look for just a couple minutes at where things stand. Let me go back here first. Hmm, I don't know if I want to spend that much on Springfield 1861s. Those 20 pound parrots might be nice to have at some point, though. I'm actually going to start spending some more money on economy. I want to bring down the cost of weapons because that's really what's hurting me a lot right now so we're only going to take seven brigades into this next fight i'll probably do it with the second core now nah, maybe we'll go with the third core we'll t let mcclellan lead that fight and i may just go ahead and use some relatively inexperienced units just to get them some experience yes, sir. let's take a look here Switch these guys over to Springfields. Oh boy. Eh, maybe not. Getting pretty costly to have a lot of veteran units. So I'm just going to have to kind of be content with some of them being veteran and some not, I think. It gets really expensive after a while to maintain. I got a major general in charge of a brigade. Eh, it's not not gonna work. Okay. Let's look ahead here. I'm, I'm going to actually drop some of these units out because my third core is going to be my seven units that I'm going to take into Perryville or Iuka. 
So we'll take a uh, let's take some of these one star units along with some two stars. Is that a defensive battle or offensive one? All right, it's an attack with 10 brigades. There's nine. Who am I missing? Hampton's Legion, we gotta get them in there. I always try to use the units that the uh, you guys that are patrons are sponsoring so that you're inv involved in every battle as much as possible. All right, so these will be the brigades we take in. Hey, All right, it's time to upgrade your weapons, buddy. Oh, that's going to be expensive, too. That's all right. Got to do what you got to do. 1855s, 1855s, 1842s. eighteen forty twos. Those are actually much better melee units with the 1842s. So it's good to still have some of those. So I'm actually going to I'm going to rename those ones with 1842s as assault brigades just so I know where they are on the battlefield so they can spearhead any melee attacks. Oh my gosh, 94,000. No, that's not going to work. And Rookie just really tears them up, so let's do this. Hey, sir. Okay. So this is what we're looking at. Let's see how that's going to stack up for Ayuka, and we'll wrap this thing up. Okay, so uh, 24,000 men against 8,000. Uh, I don't think this is going to be too hard of a fight, but we'll wrap it up right here. We'll come back next time with the Battle of Ayuka, one of those small ones that really uh, should be fairly easy. As always, I welcome your input on... Uh, the fight at Antietam. What did you do? What did you find worked? What do you think I should do moving forward as far as building my army? Uh, how would you go about uh, spending the, the career points moving forward? What do you think? Uh, just use the comment section below. Check out some of my videos from my visit to the Antietam battlefield. Have a great week, everybody, and we will see you again soon. Thanks for watching.